everyone. Welcome to Facebook Sunday. How is everyone doing? What a gorgeous weekend we had there this, this weekend. Here, not there. Great weekend. Roseward Stampers Delight.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today what I decided I was going to do was show how I run my card buffet. So I'm going to read a few things first and people are still getting on. So a lot of people ask me questions how I run my buffet. What is a buffet? Sort of think like food buffet. You go up and you pick and choose what you want. So what I do um, is I, I run this every uh, maybe three times a year and I do a stamp a stack three times a year. But we'll get into that in a moment. Um, so I just want to remind everybody, first of all, that there's only one week left to sign up to um, join Stampin' Up! Join my team for that awesome special. Trust me, you, you'll you never regret it. Um, also, registration for On Stage is going on now. I'll be at Hartford. I hope to see you all there if you are demonstrators, if you're in my team or just um, demonstrators that follow me. Uh, also, if you sign up now to be a demonstrator, you might still be able to get in. I know some places have already been closed out, but you may be able to get into an on-stage near you. It's so exciting. I can't wait. Um, don't forget to follow me on YouTube under Stampers Delight. And also, I'm very close to Maui, so somebody's going to win that. Well, I put it away. Somebody's going to win that awesome tote bag. Okay, so let's get back to the card buffet. All right, so how many, hi everybody, there's the comments coming in now. Hi Melanie, hi Lisa, hi Pam, hi Fran. So if you have any questions while I'm talking and showing, just um, you know put them in the comment section and I will answer them between tonight and tomorrow, okay? So let me show you first the awesome part I like. This is what I do. I put everything in buckets. Here's my buckets. I got these at the Dollar Story, Dollar Tree, quite a few years ago. And I'll show you more what's inside. So everything gets put inside here. And what I do is I have, like, here's another one over here. Everything is put in here. This only has one left to do because I started cleaning up. But I put everything in the bags, okay? And then the girls can pick and choose how many they want to do. And again, you'll see more of that. What I want to explain is people ask me, well, how many, how do you know how to, how many to prep for? Well, I've done a couple of them. The first one I did, and I will tell you, um, I prepped, I probably had 10 or 15 girls and I prepped, I always prep at least one extra basket. If I've got 10 girls coming, I do at least 11 baskets. If I've got 15 girls coming, I do at least 16. Just so, um, you know, Somebody, if somebody doesn't like a card, doesn't need a particular card, they have other options. Also, the first one I did the first hour, because I ran it for about two, two and a half hours, um, I re-cut everything. So if we ran out and somebody wanted to use that bucket, I was constantly recutting. I don't do that anymore. What I do is the, the stampers come. The, I tell them, pick out the one you really want to do the most. Okay, because I am not going to refill them. It just gets a little too crazy when you have a very large crowd. And let's see. So, again, and I figure two to three of the cards in each bucket per person. So, if I got 10 people coming, I got 11 buckets, I got 33 cards out there. Three cards in each, uh, well, you know, enough for 33 or three people. Three cards per person, you know what I mean? I hope. <laughs> Um, the cards that I do, I sell, they're, they pay $2 a card. These are with envelopes or three for $5. A lot of them are simple stamping, but there's also more for the casual and avid stamper. Okay. Um, dies. Usually if there's a die involved, I cut all those out first so that I don't have a lot of people having to go over to the big shop. But what we do use is any embossing folders they will do their own embossing folders. It just gets a little too crazy if you've got six buckets with dies, even though I have three or four big shots, it just gets a little too hectic and time consuming and they only have the two, two and a half hours. So I do all the die cutting ahead of time. Again, I run this at least three times a year, the same with my stampa stacks. 
Now, people ask the difference. Well, stamp -a stacks they come in there's three to four tables, and they stamp five of the same card at each table. I run both of those three times a year. I have stampers that love the card buffets. I have stampers that just like the um, stamp -a stacks and then I have stampers that come to everything. And we, we love all our stampers, so that's the way I run that. Okay, usually it's a spring fling, um, Christmas stamp -a stack and card buffet, and then one during celebration. So that is the way I do it. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people that do them out there do them a little bit different. This is just the way I do it. So I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you what I have in the bucket, okay? Okay, so... I'm going to bring in the bucket. Now, I showed you the front already. And these decals we had from stamping up a while ago. The, the little clip on the front. Let me just show you that again. I got these from Amazon. And they just clip right on here. And the card fits right in there. So that they can see what they're going to do. Okay. Inside the bucket, I would have... A bag, which is when I took, I get, this was the last one. So I would have a bag with, here's the card front. Let me take that out right there. Okay. I would have this, this, and then the inside piece, which looks like is missing. So let me just grab one of those right here. Okay. These are the three pieces. Wrong size. You can see I ran out of that one. Okay. Still got the wrong size. All right. This is the right size. There we go. All right. So this card uses the card base, another piece on top. Oh, that's why, because I, I let them stamp right inside. I forgot. And that's all they needed was these two pieces right here. And then what I have in here is all the stamps. All the inks that we're using, any of the doodads, the embossing folder. Oh, wow, my embossing folder broke. Wow. Okay, then. We can still use it today anyway. See that? And I do, and here, of course, is the stamp set. Now, let me tell you what I do with the stamp set, and I'll get back to the broken embossing folder. Okay, so I always put the stamp set in the bucket so they can see what stamp set they're using in case they want to order it. But what I ask them is to only use the blocks that I have mounted. This one, I happen to use almost all of them. But I don't let them open and change anything from here into here. Okay, make sense? Whatever's out there is what they're using. Now, if there's a saying in another bucket that they'd rather have, I tell them they can go ahead and use that as long as nobody else is using it. So let me just move these out of the way. Okay, back to the embossing folder. So obviously, I haven't looked in that bucket until just now, and this got broken. So what's going to happen? Well, I mean, I could actually probably still put it together and use it. I'll tape it for today, maybe. Or maybe I won't even use it today. Unfortunately, you do have to... It's like anything else, okay? And I'm looking for the words. It's wear and tear on your products, okay? You hope that everybody would will be uh, very gentle with your products, your stamps inks it does happen where things get broken okay um there's nothing you can do about it it's like anything else it may happen and as you see this it did happen i do send out which brings me to the next point i do send out an email before they come with the rules yes i have rules the rules are they can't come before it starts because it's not fair if somebody gets here 15 minutes early and starts stamping and grabs all the ones that everybody wants, if that makes sense. Um, they have to clean, when they're done, they have to clean everything they've used and put it back in the bucket. Let's say they use this one I'm doing right now, and they make two cards. 
and they want to move on to another one. They have to clean the stamps. Everything's on the table. They clean them. They put everything back. And then they put the big bucket back on the table. And they do the next card. The other thing I ask them, and I, and I do have them, um, you know, like I said, I email this. And hopefully they all read it. And then I, uh, I remind them when they get here. Um, you know, if, if you see an ink, you're using a light colored ink. Please be careful. Make sure you don't put it into a darker ink. It does happen, vice versa. Um, again, that's wear and tear on my products that, unfortunately, I do have to accept. But I hope that everybody, um, you know, pays attention. And usually, the, usually they are, you know, pretty good. Accidents happen. Okay, so let's, like, for instance, this would be out on the table from the bucket. And we're just going to stamp this up real quick. And it doesn't matter which colors I use because they're all clean. Okay, and I'm just going to stamp this one quick. And then they would grab this one. This is a uh, like a simple stamped card. I'm going to do this one in the mommy blue. So we'll put some down here. I like this kind of stamping because you can just stamp all over. You stamp on top of everything. It doesn't matter. And again, this the card buffets are good for people that whether you've stamped for a long time or you just started stamping because um, there's all different kinds of stamping available. You know, I got simple stamping and I've got a little bit more for the casual stamper. So that's it. There we go. Now the inside of the saying for this card, I would just stamp in there. Not that one, because that one's already done. Here we go. <laughs> Bring that piece in there. And if you stay till the end, I have some other things to show you. Or if you watch the replay, you'll see it. Okay, and then I'm just going to do, I think, the happy birthday in here. And I'll take that seahorse, which I'm not going to ink back up. I'm just going to press it right over there. There we have it. Now, this I would normally run through the, the um, embossing folder, which isn't I can't. But you see that this one has the waves on it. This one's just going to be plain for now. Okay, so let me grab my dimensionals, and I'll put that together. I have a couple others to show you. And I'll put all the doodads, dimensionals, everything in the buckets, in envelopes, little, the clear plastic envelopes. So everything is there. So we're just going to put some dimensionals on here. that over there and I do have all the cards that we did at the card buffet my last card buffet to show you I had 12 girls I had 16 buckets I got a little carried away this is also good because um, I could stamp every day and have a class every day and probably not use all the stamp sets that I have so what happens is on my monthly classes, I use four stamp sets or a few more, but we do four cards. And then the card buffets, I can showcase more stamp sets and more doodads and more product so that everybody gets to use and try out more products that way. Now, for the, like, the holiday Christmas stamp a stack and the card buffet that I'll be doing for Christmas. I won't use the same, they won't be the same cards. They may be the same stamps. I might use the same stamp set once or twice. They won't all be the same. Does that make sense? So the card buffet, I, ha I have all the um, Christmas ones that I have to use. And then the card, the stamp a stack will be other ones. So I'm just going to, because I don't know, I was using my tool here. Here, I'm going to put that there. Because um, I'm getting ready for Facebook Friday and my class also. So I'm not sure where my tool is. So I'm just going to use my scissors. Just put that there. 
maybe one more right here. So that would be an, an idea of one of the cards that they would do. Okay. Okay, Melanie says she's broken a um, embossing folder before and taping it works. I figured it would. So again, there's one of the cards that they would do, and then they would clean everything, which I don't have to. Well, I do have to, but I'll do that later because I can put everything back after that. I'm just going to move these over here so they don't get a, on everything else, and we'll go to the next one. And again, this is what I would do. I would have them put everything back in the bucket, move that behind, and take the next bucket. And here's the next bucket. Now, switch the camera. So the next bucket they see would be this one. They like that one. The card's upside down, but that's okay because we're going to take it out anyway. And again, I got my little clip on. I'm going to take my card out. And I would have everything in here. There's the stamp sets being used. And this is also a good way to show them the host sets, which, um, you know, you can only get if you um, have a party, book a party, have a workshop, or an order, a larger order. So for this one, again, I would have this piece in one uh, baggie. Here's a picture of the baggie like I get these at the dollar store okay and I would have one for the gray one for the blue and one for the white and sometimes I put them all in the same baggie so for this one I would just have them fold it and you see that they get to use a lot of different products now on this one they're gonna get to use and a little bit of technique too this one they're gonna use the crackle paint and if you saw my one of my previous videos, I don't mount that anymore. I just leave it right in there. I ink it up. Just be careful. You get it a little bit on the side. You have to make sure you clean it off. And then I just lay it down and press it. Because it's just a background, so if it's not perfect, it's okay. Yes. Somebody, uh, Melanie asked three or four, three or four of each card. Okay. So I have 12 to 16 buckets. Okay. I have enough for each girl. To, no, not four. I usually do two to three cards. So if I have 10 girls coming in that one bucket, I might prep for 30 each bucket. So there's 30 cards in each some I do less, um, depending on, I, I get to know the people, okay? Um, children's cards, I don't make a lot of those up. I might only prep two of those. So if there's 10 people coming, maybe I only prep for 20. Now, while we're talking on that subject, then everybody wants to know, well, what do you do with all your leftovers? Well, I mean, you can always use the leftovers because, let's face it, this is a just a quarter size cardstock so is this um some of these will also be my swaps at um on stage okay yeah it is a lot of cards i don't always have i mean sometimes i have six six people at the um card buffets it does take that's why you don't do a lot of real intricate ones okay i don't anyway i try to keep them like this Okay, where they're not real, real intricate because I have a lot of cutting to do. And I also have two helpers. They don't, um, they would help me cut, but I usually do that. Um, I want this one. I, I usually do that at night after work. Like I'll, pre I'll start prepping maybe the week before and I'll just prep one box at a, or one bucket at a time. So this one, I'm just going to take the Navy Navy. that and again that's one of another reason why I don't use you see I'm stamping that right over it's a, and I don't care it's not on I'm not going to use the stamparatus because that's for a regular monthly class that is not something I would use for the card buffet 
Um, I want this one. Oop, I just put it in the light ink and then the dark, but that's okay because they're mine. <laughs> and it's light to dark. I don't mind that. Okay. Um, again, what I do is the week before I start prepping, I can, I can get usually two, at least two cards done a night before, um, each night. So, and again, it is a lot of work. A cat, Kathy. Okay. So let me, let me back up. It is a lot of work. Okay. That's one of the reasons I only do it three times a year. It is a lot of cutting, but I also have a big big gigantic paper cutter now. Um, so Kathleen just asked how much I charge $2 a card. Okay. This one is a little bit too long because I didn't cut them. So I'm going to just grab my paper cutter here and trim him. So let, me, let me just trim off this edge. I got one that was a little bit longer than it was supposed to be. And that's the other thing. I mean, you're cutting a lot of cards, okay? Or I am when I do this. So I just tell them if there's a problem, something, you know, might have gotten jammed. I don't know. Maybe I was, you know, not awake and I didn't cut it correctly. They know they can go over to the paper. There's paper cutters and they can cut that, trim it if they have to. But now you see why I don't refill the buckets because that's a lot of prepping. So this is going to go right in here. Nothing to it. You see this one I use the um, framelit, rectangular framelit. And then I, again, that's what made me change my mind on that because I would have had to done at least prep for 30 cards there. That's a little bit too many. And you don't know who's going to pick what. So you might be stuck with all 30. Let's see. I want the little dragonfly. Yes, it's it's up to them how many they make of each card. Some people might want some people like to make one of each card. And some like to make, you know, if there's something they really like, they want to make just that card. They can make 10 of them. Now, say two people really like the same basket. And I've only prepped for, I've only prepped for, um, you know, 30 cards, let's say. I ask that they sit together, whether they know each other or not, and share the basket. So Mary comes and sits down and Mary likes this bucket and she starts stamping and we know that there's only 20, maybe 20 prepped in there, maybe 30, maybe 12, <laughs> depending on how many people are there. Okay. Um, she's going to go over by Susie and say, Hey Susie, do you mind if I sit next to you and make a few cards? And they're going to share that bucket. So everyone can, and I've never had a problem with it. So again, there's one more that I did. Again, to go over it, if I have 10 people coming, I have 12 buckets. Each bucket has enough for two to three cards, not four cards, two to three cards per person. So if I have 10 people, I each bucket's got either 20 to 30 cards. And knowing your customers, knowing your stampers is how you figure that out. Kathleen is asking, do, do they have to do a minimum? Yes, I'm glad you asked that because I forgot to tell you that. The minimum is $10. If they come and spend all their, and, and chit-chat, that's fine. That's what we're here for. We're here to have a good time. If they're talking to their neighbor, okay, for the whole two and a half hours, and they only get two cards done, they're paying $10. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Linda. I'm not so organized. If you saw my room right now, I'm doing this Facebook live. I'm getting ready for a class on Tuesday and I have my stuff for Facebook live Friday morning over there, but thank you for thinking I'm organized. I've been a demonstrator for 18 years. It'll be 19 years in March. I've just been doing the card buffets for the last two years. Yes, I do RSVP. 
I asked them to RSVP. Thank you, Win Ann. Win Ann is one of the ones that comes and helps me. Um, I, I also have never really had a big problem with people not showing up. Um, once in a while, people get sick. You can't make it at any class. I do have a rule that, you know, if you if you cancel um, two times, last minute, then you have to place an order. I really don't have a big problem with that. Um, everybody, everybody knows how much work goes into this, and they, um, I've just never had a really big problem with it. And if you do, you just talk to that person. Okay, so that would be another bucket. So let's do one more. Let's see. Let's do, well, this little guy here. Okay, so this one, again, you, there's the plastic piece on there. Let me pull the card off. Now, this one I changed up a little bit. And again, some sometimes when I'm doing these, I change the card at the last minute. But now this one had the sailing home and we used the butterfly wishes because it was a birthday card. You were my true north and inside it said happy birthday. So they get to see both stamp sets. And here's a little bit of what I was telling you. Okay, so here's the card stock. This was in an envelope at one point, but I started cleaning up. Here's the pieces. This is a perfect example. I had all the water already cut and embossed. I already had all the little ships cut out, and I had the suns done. Now... Punches, I usually let them punch out themselves. I did punch these out because they were so easy ahead of time. However, usually the punches, if there's something to punch out, that they, they do that themselves. And again, I'm taking out the card, the stamps here. My biggest problem, my biggest problem when I'm doing one of these is that I run out of blocks, so then I have to start using the um paper pumpkin ones, which are a little flatter. Okay, so again, I had everything prepped here. They just come in, and they start making their card. Now, I took the ribbon. Yay. Oh, I got a piece. We'll use that. I'm going to change that a little bit. All right, so there's my bone folder. Yes, it is a lot of fun, Kathy. We have a great time doing this, and I have a great bunch of stampers that come here. So I have that piece. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little blue here and jump the gun on that. I need my little blue piece first. I need my water first. Okay. really jump the gun because that's going to stick. Hold on one second. Okay. Talking. Can't talk and stamp at the same time. Okay, so let me take my early espresso. Move this out of the way. And just stamp that down. And take this and my waves. Put my waves right here. Now I know I glued that down. It'll lift up because I didn't put a lot on there. There we go. All right. I'm just going to put this one little piece here if it's not too small right around it. Normally I would tie the little knot like I did here. But you can see that I did it on that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Put that down on my card. Lay that flat. I'm going to take my Mango Melody, which is what I did different on this one. And remember, I got everything in little plastic things here. The doodads, the cutouts. Not everything is cut out. They do have to... I know it looks like I did a lot, but I just happened to grab those ones. Um... And I'm going to show you, as soon as I'm done with this card, the other cards. And you'll see what they had to do. So I know a few girls are on here. A few stampers are on here that came. And just feel free to chime in how much you love these, <laughs> these card buffets. So I'm going to put that right there. 
forgot to do true north, so I'll do that now. If you're in my area, whoop, sorry, got a little nervous there. If you're in my area and you'd love to come in one of my classes, please let me know. My head might be in the way here. Did that a little crooked. You get the idea. I would love to have you at one of my buffets. And then I got the other little one. Yeah, that really is crooked. That's okay. I got to just put a little, um, I got one long enough here. Always a way to fix a mistake. I'll do it later, but I have another piece I can put over there. This was basically just to show you how the card buffets work. And if you're interested in coming to one of my card buffets, just go to stampersdelight.com and reach out to me. There we go. This makes it look a little bit more like a sunset or a sun. So again, everything is in the buckets. That's how everything is prepped and ready to go. Um, so let me show you the other cards that we did. All right. So you can see that I didn't, I don't prep everything. Some of them are actually just a couple pieces of cardstock. No, I don't. It, the adhesives, Kathleen's asking if I, um, they bring their own adhesive, their own snail, Tombow, whatever they're going to use. I do have Tombow here, um, for some projects. They supply their own adhesive if they need a re refill on the snail. I have that here. But I do supply dimensionals and the glue dots. Okay, so. Well, Donna Gray, I hope you do come for a holiday over here. You are more than welcome anytime. You have to bring Daryl, though. Reggie won't have you coming by yourself. So here's a cute little card that we did. And you can see that we use the tearing effect. And this this all or technique effect this gives them ways and shows them other um techniques and i shouldn't keep saying them because it's, some of you are not demonstrators you are stampers and this was just a cute quick get well card and you can see right here i used one of our new they got to use one of the a couple of new things those are our new little googly eyes and that's a purple one this one is the um, retreat set. And when I open this one up, now you see this is just cardstock. So there wasn't a lot to prep on this. But they had to cut out both holes with the punch. I didn't do that. And then this one is a little, little more work, but not really for me. Okay, it's just designer series paper. And I, I usually cut a whole bunch of these uh, Berry Vanilla and the White out. And then they stamped everything, and then they ran it through the Big Shot both times. This one went through the Big Shot and this, and this was the new embossing folder. Okay. Here's another one. Again, two pieces of cardstock. White on white. The So Loved set. They stamped it, and then they used the embossing folder. And then, of course, some rhinestones. Yes, I include the envelopes. What I used to do was I did not give them the envelopes until they came to pay me. Then they'd have to go back and stamp their envelopes. So I do put the envelopes in the, in the bag, too. So if there's, like, this one would have one bag with, let me just open it up. One, the bag would have this cardstock and this, let's say, 20 sheets. 20 of these, 20 of these, all the stamp sets, all the ink. And then 20 envelopes in there. Okay. This was just a quick last minute one I threw in there. Um, just so that they got to use the new punch. It was just a cute little Halloween one. With the new stamp set. Which is on my table here somewhere. Because I was playing with that. So that was just a cute little quickie. Then you get into ones that are a little bit more. Where they had to color. Because we, I always try to do birthday, at least one child's card, at least one masculine card, at least one get well card, and or sympathy or both. So I try, that's on the occasions, all occasion ones, which is what this one was. 
Now, this one got a little messy here, and that does happen. Usually, I have them in plastic um, jackets, and I didn't do that this time. But, and she felt bad, but you know what? All I got to do is sponge that. We can fix anything. And again, they get to use, you get, you get to try out some of the stamps that you've never used before. This one, now these were cut out beforehand. I had some left over from another class, so I didn't have to really cut out that many. So think of things that you can use, reuse from other classes. This one is one that sold out. But again, I had a lot of those made up already. This was the, I love our little cows, and you can see it had the envelope here. Yes, that's exactly what it's great for, Megan. They get to try out all these different sets before they buy them. And then maybe there's a set that you really like, but you, you don't think you're going to want to have. I didn't think I'd want this one. I love this little cow. And you can see I put little blue eyes in there. And once you start playing with it, you love it. Okay, this is the woven heirloom set. And again, you see it's just, it's cardstock, DSP, some ribbon. So they're not the real intricate cards that I would do on my monthly classes or fancy folds. Now these, these two, um, if you remember, well, there's, here, that's the same one because they had extras. We had pump, paper pumpkin kits. That's still the same one. I did a couple extras of those. And I had a lot of leftovers. So this is the second time I've used this one. And there were still stampers that wanted them. I didn't put the twine that went in there with that. But this was the big paper pumpkin, the paper pumpkin we as demonstrators could buy or subscribers could buy, but then as a demonstrator at one time, we could buy the party pack. This was great for a quick, easy card. There's two cards right there. No, I don't give a discount for a certain size order. I did that the first time, and you, you really don't, you're, you're slighting yourself. You're not making it worth your while. Uh, sometimes I'll give them free shipping if, it, if their order is a large order, but no, because of all the cutting and everything, and, uh, you know, I don't have a, nobody seems to have a problem with that one. This is, of course, the Colorful Seasons with the new Thanksgiving set. So they got to use the sayings from the new Thanksgiving set. So let's see, that was one. I think they got all of them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, and where's the other ones? Where did I put? Oh, 13, 14, and I missed the other one. Two of them are, oh, they're back in here. There you go, 15. 15 cards. So you can come and make 15 cards. If you just sit there and stamp and don't, um, you know, talk <laughs> who does it but usually um so how many do they usually make okay i have people that just make six that's going to be the ten dollars and then i have people that make 18 20 cards sometimes more 30 so let me just so that's how i run my card buffet if again if you're interested in coming i'd love to have you i live in new york so if you have to fly in, well, we have a spare room. Donna, we have a spare room. <laughs> so again, just contact me. So real, uh, I still have a few minutes um, as long as you're hanging on with me. I want to show you. I'm going to flip the camera back because I have some great cards to show you from a swap that I was in from the cruise. And it's for the holiday cards. So let me show you those. Okay, so... And if you have any other questions on the card buffet, please just leave leave me questions. I will answer them. And this is also my host code for, for this month. So this was a swap that we did, an online swap, for people that were on the cruise. And this is from Laura Milligan. So this gets you to see some of the newer stamp sets that maybe I haven't played with yet. This one is from Renee Coney and I'm... No, I said, well, you said your name wrong, and I apologize. And I love to get, 
Oh, you're okay, Sullivan County. That's not that far. And sorry to stop in the middle of that, Becky. I uh, I live in Town of Hyde Park, Dutchess County. And in October, I start going back to Sundays instead of Tuesday nights for my classes. So that might be easier for you if you're interested. So here's another cute little guy. We're using this set in our my uh, retreat, my fall retreat, which is coming up in October, which is almost sold out. This is Susan Smith. First time I'm doing an all-day retreat, and I'm happy to say it's going to be a good one. Here's another one, and this is from oh Dina Rakow. So I love to get different swaps and see what everybody's doing with them. Okay, this one is Jill Olson. I'm right below Rhinebeck, Statsburg, between Rhinebeck and Hyde Park, Becky. And this one, I love this fold. I'm going to be playing with that. I did a card with this kind of fold before, but not so small there. I like that. Terry Gaines. Whoop. Dina Lanzendorf. There's Dina's. That took a lot of work. Hi, Deb. And these are some of my favorite. This is uh, Susan Canfield. Some of my favorite cards are just tone on tone. And what I mean is like white on white, off uh, very vanilla, very vanilla, and just a hint of color. I think they look so elegant. How is that made under the tree? How is what made under the tree? I'm not sure which one you're talking about, Pam, but just send me a message and tell me which color one you're talking about. Okay, here's another one. This is again from Laura Milligan. I did two groups, so I have double. Uh, I have some from the same demonstrators. This is from Robin Scherzer. Sorry if I'm doing a terrible name a job at your name. And this one is from Frenchie. I have this set. I haven't played with it yet. The brown one. Okay, the brown one is this one. And it's like this. Okay. And I do have a, a video out there on that kind of a fold. And this one is from Linda Cullen. This one is from Rolanda Patton. I like this one too. Let's see how it opens up. But you see how the trees, at first I thought it opened like a, a Z fold this way and that way. But if you know it, look at this. Sometimes I, is that gorgeous or what? I like that. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, share my videos, please. So those are the swaps I, I was in. Now, let me show you what I'm working. Oh, wait a minute. I got more. That was only the first pile. I thought there was more. Not sure. This one didn't have a name. This one is from Tammy Ackerson. Great, great cards. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, stampers. This one doesn't have a name on it again, so I can't give you credit. Sorry. Like to see the different ideas. Even if you have the stamp set, everybody has different ideas. This is Kathy Schaefer. This one is Linda Cullen again. And this one is Karen Truff, Tr Trufer. Great, great ideas. Especially since, like I said, I haven't played with a lot of these yet. This is Kara. I don't see Kara's last name on here. 
This one is Michelle Sweet or Suit. Tammy Ackerson. The red, yeah, it is. They're all gorgeous. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have a name on it. We we do uh, put our names on them. Sometimes they fall off, but I didn't get in, and I try to keep them together. This is Kathy uh, Schaefer again. Look at this one. Nice and gleamy, glittery. I, I haven't played with this set, and I haven't, and I can't wait to play with this one. This is from Gina Kohlfeldt. Love, 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 love of those cups. Again, no name on this one. Lots of trees. This is from Michelle Suit. This one is Rhonda Bessler. And let's see who this one's from. This is Natalie Travis. And then the last one I have here is BJ Peters. Great job, Stampers. Loved all the cards and the swaps. I hope you Stampers like them as well. So what I am working on for Friday morning is the still scenes. And I'm just going to bring this one in. I did post it on my page, my blog, or my website. So what I did was I used this as a Halloween one. This was my first card with this, the globe set. And you see, I'll bring it up closer. You can see the black on black with the uh, foil paper. I knew as soon as I saw that set that it was going to go so well with the Halloween one. And I know this one will be making it to the Cali kids. They love their Halloween. I didn't do anything on the inside yet. So this is what I'm working on for Friday morning. So um, don't forget to tune in Friday morning, Facebook Live. I'm still on at 8 a.m. until summer hours are over. Summer hours end, um, end of September. So then I'll be back on at 7 a.m. But I will... I will... Um, be on Friday morning, 8 a.m., where I'm going to showcase this one. I have about six cards already done. I was playing with them, but I just love it for Halloween. So let me flip the camera. See? Shaker card. I'm going to have to order more of these. I think I've used them all up already. So thank you so much for ch tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great Sunday evening. Have a great week ahead of you, and I will see you back here Friday morning at 8 a.m. Bye. Keep on stamping, stampers. Bye-bye.